Hey guys, Flo from Off to Lens here. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in French Alps, and today we're going to talk about the BMPC 6K Pro. Um, so I've just received the camera, which is just behind me, a few days ago, and I've asked you guys online on YouTube and Instagram what you wanted to know. Uh, if you wanted me to test anything, um, I've got quite a lot of requests. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a few videos because there's just too much to cover. Um, so with this one, I'm just going to focus on just hands-on and my first impressions after shooting with it for about four days. So I'm going to talk about the camera itself, I'm going to talk about the screen, I'm going to talk about the NDs, I'm going to talk about the battery life, I'm going to talk about how it is to shoot handheld with it, and since I got the EVF and the grip as well, I will touch on them too. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. As you probably know by now, I've been a Blackmagic shooter since 2013 with the original Pocket and I've used since then pretty much all of their cameras. But the reason I got this one is because as a documentary filmmaker, the 6K Pro is a much welcome upgrade to my regular 6K, which I use all the time and love. And it addresses pretty much all the issues and limitations that the regular one has. Again, this is not a full review. Um, I like to actually use a camera before I make a review. I made sure to test the camera when it was bright, which is what I don't normally do, uh, just so I could test the screen and the EVF as well. I won't go too much into the specs yet because uh, it's essentially the same as the 6K, um, but it is much bigger than I anticipated. I think you can see it in the back. It's a lot taller and it's a lot deeper, especially when you look at it from the side. I think it's even bigger than my 6K with a full cage on it. But it's also better finished. I know it sounds weird, but the, the grip feels amazing. I can put all my fingers on it, which is great. And it also feels more solid and less hollow for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, because I think it's actually the same construction, but it does feel more tight, more sturdy. There's also no movement uh, at the mount when you put a lens on. So for example, my regular 6K, when I put a lens on, there's a slight give. You can feel a bit of movement and you can hear it when you touch, um, when you turn the lens. With this one, it's just very tight, rock solid, doesn't move. I think that's probably my favorite new feature with this camera. I got used to shoot with a monitor and having, with an external monitor, and having a screen that is that bright, um, that big, and that sharp built in is pretty amazing. It's quite thick, like you can tell it's well built, and also it offers a good resistance when you move it, which I like. I hate when screens are too flimsy and they move too, like, too easily, so this is great. One thing that I noticed though is that kept uh, underexposing my footage. I think it's because the screen is so bright that even though I try to trust the histogram, my eye um, automatically thinks that it's just brighter when, when it's not. So I just have to keep that in mind. But I think it was the same when I first got my 1000 nit uh, small HD monitor. Now I have to talk about the blue tint issue because you guys ask me uh, about it a lot. Yes, there is a blue tint on my screen, unfortunately. Uh, it's not as bad um, as I've seen online with other cameras and it actually didn't bother me when I was shooting with it. Uh, I think I almost, I think I kind of forgot about it until I actually put my 6K Pro next to my normal 6K to actually compare the color for, for the video that I'm doing now. Um, so hopefully the firmware will fix this. I don't intend to send my camera back. To me, it's not um, a major issue. This footage looks amazing and looks exactly the same as the 6K. And that's what matters for me now. So I will see when I've done the, the update, uh, if it fixes it or not, and I'll let you guys know as well. I would say if tomorrow I have a paid gig uh, and I need to shoot on the 6K Pro, I will bring my small HD monitor just to make sure that what I'm seeing is, uh, is accurate. The NDs are my second favorite feature for sure. Uh, coming from the C200 and the OSI Mini Pro, I really miss them on my 6K. I forgot how nice it is to just go out with your camera and your lenses and you don't have to worry about filters, filter thread and that kind of stuff. I've never been a big fan of um, circular filters. I do use them all the time, as you know, but if I had to pick any filters, 100%. I probably need to do more tests, but so far I haven't noticed any um, shift in color or focus. Obviously over time I'm gonna keep checking that, but yeah, so far so good. The button is also well placed above your thumb. I think it's very natural. And I've spent most of my time shooting between ND2 and ND4, which, is the, which are the values that I normally use with solid NDs as well. 
so a lot of you know that I shoot handheld most of the time so I was very curious to see how the 6k Pro would feel I actually like it a lot more than a regular 6k I think it just feels more balanced because it's slightly heavier and bigger uh, to me it feels like shooting with a big um, DSLR like a 1DX for example um, when you have a lens on it just it doesn't want to go forward it just stays put so the whole thing is heavier but very comfortable and feels very natural there's also less check due to the weight and I feel like with a 6K, I always feel like there's too much um, pressure on the actual um, handle when I'm holding it just with one hand, for example. I feel like I always want to go like tilt it forward. Um, but with this one, it's very sturdy, it's very comfortable. Um, I did have a strap on me um, that had nothing to do with stabilization or anything like that. It's just that I was so worried because I just got the camera in the first few days that I didn't want to drop it. So I had it around my shoulder on the Peak Design strap. And I'm curious to receive the cage as well because I'll be receiving the small rig cage in a few weeks. So I'm curious to test that out and I'm used to shoot with the top handle. So I kind of missed that, but that has nothing to do with the camera. It's just a rigging. Um, uh, system that's different for now. So yeah, overall it feels really great shooting with a 6K Pro handheld, uh, very natural and my hand didn't hurt at all even after like hours. So I know when it comes to Blackmagic cameras and battery life, people usually have a lot to say and but in my case it's never been really an issue even with the original Pocket or the 4K or the 6K. I just always have like a few on me when I shoot for personal and travel content and if it's an actual paid gig, then I will usually shoot with Vlog batteries anyway. So I'm not really too, um, yeah, I, I don't really care too much about that. But obviously it's something that people want to know. Um, with this one, I feel like you do gain battery life compared to the normal 6K. So obviously it's the NPF batteries, the bigger capacity. And even with a screen at 100%, you still get like 45 to 50 minutes, I would say, of shooting. For example, I was recording for about two hours on and off um, each time, and I've used only one battery each time. I feel like if you shoot at 50% brightness, which is the equivalent of 100% on the other 6K, uh, you would get slightly over an hour, I think like an hour and five, an hour and 10 maybe, which is pretty impressive. I did use the one that came with the camera, the branded, the Blackmagic branded one, which is 3500, I think. And I've got also two newer ones, uh, which are 2600, and they're the ones that I use as backup or that I put um, in the grip. So as I've mentioned at the start, I also have the EVF. Um, I think as a documentary filmmaker, I've always been used to shoot with EVF. And I sometimes miss it on the 6K. It's super handy when it's really bright or when you don't have a monitor. It reminds me of shooting on the C200. I like being in my own world. I own one already, the Porkies, which is really good. And, but since this one was made by Blackmagic for the Pocket, I thought I may as well just get it and to see how it performs. And it's really nice. Um, it's smaller and lighter than I expected. Obviously, they kind of need to be small, but that's very small and very light and it's very easy to attach to the top of the camera. You just have a, to unscrew the cap and just like use a little dial and it's pretty, um, pretty straightforward. The image is clean. Uh, I wish that it was slightly brighter, but in most conditions it was fine. It's easy to control the brightness through the menus as well, which is great. And yeah, like I said, I wish it was a little bit brighter, but because the image is so nice, if I had to pick between the two, I'd rather have like a nice clean image than a super bright one. So that really didn't bother me at all. I find it very comfortable to use as well. Um, it offers a nice resistance. Um, I kept the eyepiece that came with it. I didn't swap to the bigger ones. I didn't feel like um, I needed to. One thing though is that um, because it's rubber, it grabs a lot of dust and particles and stuff. So that's just a bit annoying, but that's just the nature of uh, that material. And the EVF also turns on and off, like the screen on and off, which is great. Um, but sometimes it would pick my hat, for example, or my face uh, when I was shooting, like for example, looking up, uh, which can be a bit annoying, but I don't know if that's something you can actually um, lock in the camera, I'll have to check that. But yeah, just, um, yeah, it's pretty good so far. And like I said, I've also got the grip and I love it. Um, it's super light, very comfortable. It attaches very well and very easily to the camera. It does make the camera quite tall though, as you can see behind. So yeah, that's kind of like that 1DX DSLR look, but that's to be expected. The grip gives you around two and a half hours of worth of shooting, depending on what battery you're using, um, the brightness of the screen, 
the frame rate maybe as well, which is kind of similar to my core uh, power based battery that I use on a 6K. And that's pretty cool. Um, I love not having cables sticking out on the side. Um, it's just great. I like that you can also use the grip um, without having a battery inside. So for example, on your backpack, in your backpack, if you've got the grip with two batteries in it, you can just use that and you don't need to swap the one um, that's internal. It's hot swappable, which means that you can replace the batteries while you, um, you're recording, which is awesome. It attaches to the bottom with a main dial and two pins um, very securely. One thing you do need to keep in mind is when you take the grip off, um, you will be left with some components um, unprotected at the bottom of the camera. There's a small plate that you need to remove in order to attach the grip. And I feel like that's a plate that's very easy to lose since it is so small, but there's no um, way around that though. It's either you use the grip or you don't, and in that case, you need the little plate. I think that's it for me today, guys. Um, I will make a proper review of this camera once I've used it enough and hopefully on an actual project. Um, I will also make a comparison to my regular 6K because I think a lot of people have been asking me if it's worth to upgrade to the new one. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if I forgot anything, if you want me to, to test anything else for the next time. But yeah, always happy to help. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.